Hi, and welcome to our service. If you're new here, you may be wondering who we are and what this church is all about. Well, the heart of the matter is this. We're a group of people doing our best to love God and love those around us. One of the ways we express this love is through worship because our God is truly amazing. He created everything, great and small, and his love for us is incredible, powerful, and completely unconditional. We also spend time looking into his word, the Bible, and receive practical teaching to guide us along his path in our everyday lives. But it doesn't end when the service is over. Throughout the week, we gather in groups to serve, pray, reach out to our community, and sometimes just to hang out and have fun. Life is full of challenges and none of us are perfect, but we believe that's one of the reasons God has brought us together. We're all here to help and support each other through each step of life's journey because nobody should have to travel alone. So thanks for joining us today. No matter who you are, we want you to know you are welcome. And good morning, West Shore. How's everybody doing? Good morning, good morning. Good, good. Doing good, good. It's good to welcome everybody here. It's good to welcome Pastor Tim back from vacation. Yep. Woo. Yep. So. <laughs> Well, I want to ask everybody to please stand up as we open up this morning's worship service with a song that 
kind of helps remind us that there's something a little bit more outside these four walls and that there is a world outside of our windows.
Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we humbly bow before you this morning, thanking you for your love and your grace and your mercy. Father, for knowing that you have created everything and that you desire a personal one-on-one -on -one relationship with us, but that it doesn't stop there. Father, help us to realize that there is a world outside of our windows. There is a world outside of the four walls of this church, Father, where people are dying, not knowing your love. Father, help us to be your hands and feet and to spread your word. Father, help us to be your heart and to share your love. And to know that it doesn't stop with us. But Father, it starts with us. And that you have called us to share the good news with those around us. To everyone that we come in contact with. Father, we're grateful to be here today. Father, I thank you for Pastor Tim and the word that he's going to bring this morning as we begin this new sermon series. Father, help us to truly realize how important we are to the furtherment of your kingdom here. Father, you could do it without us with ease, but that's not what you desire. You desire for us to be a part of it. Help us to learn that today. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. The new year is often a time of reflection, <clears throat> a chance to look back on the past 365 days and remember. Sometimes the memories bring a smile, and other times they break our hearts. Chances are you've experienced a bit of both this past year. The new year is also a time to look ahead, to imagine what could be, to scan the horizon with expectation and seek God's guiding hand. It's a time to strive for better, to live louder, love stronger, and be more of who God has created us to be. It's an opportunity for new beginnings, a chance to start fresh, to pursue God with a renewed passion, and to press on with all our hearts. The truth is, God has been faithful this past year, and that faithfulness promises to carry us through the next. As the new year begins, may we remember this one simple truth. In Christ, we are a new creation. The old is gone, and the new has come. Hey, West Shore family, it is great to see everybody here. If this is your first time here or you haven't been here in a while, I'd like to invite you, if you would, to uh, find in your worship guide a connection card. If you would, take a minute and fill that out and drop it in one of the offering plates at the front or the back of your church. Uh, we would appreciate that. If you're watching online, you can go to wsfamily.net slash connect and fill out an online connection card there. And as always, if you have a prayer request in-house, fill out one of the prayer cards and drop them in the offering plates. And then anytime during the week, you can email us info at westshorebaptist.org and we'll be sure to pray for your prayer request. Um, it is great to be in worship today. Amen. It is great to start off a, a new year. I know we're a couple of, okay, you realize we're 15 days into the new year already. <laughs> How many days till Christmas? <laughs> One of these days I'm going to ask that and somebody's going to tell me how many, right? Too many. Anyway, too many. There you go. It's great to be um, back. It's great to be in worship again. Um, thank you, Pastor Jay and everyone for, uh, um, I don't even want to say filling in, but uh, because there's no filling in, we're a team, but uh, for uh, carrying the load, I guess, while, while we were on vacation. We appreciate that. As always, God has blessed us with a wonderful team here at West Shore. And we're just excited about what God's going to do. Um, just want to remind you that our theme for this year 
is the verse that you see above me, and the key words for this year are infinitely more. Infinitely more. We are expecting God to do infinitely more than we could ever ask or think for his glory in 2023. That is our theme, and we're going to continue pounding on that and hitting it every chance we get this year. Um, with that in mind, don't forget about our mission project for this month. As you can see, the uh, medical supplies for the Ukraine are starting to fill up across the front here. Continue to bring those in, and then we will get them shipped over to the Ukraine and um, bless those folks as they are still in, in desperate need of our help and our prayers. That's Let's right. not forget right. to pray for the church in Ukraine. That's right. Pray that, that God's spirit will move and that um, the church will, will grow because of the glory of God. Amen. We're glad you're here today. We're ready to worship. We're going to celebrate with the Lord's Supper later on. We're starting a brand new message series. And we're excited to be back in the house of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, Pastor Jay. Well, as we opened up in prayer, there is a world outside of our window. And it's a world that I think we can all safely say is in desperate need of knowing who God is and who Jesus is and what he did for us. And I think we need to take every opportunity, just like with the, the supplies for Ukraine, AHG ministry, uh, the ladies group, WOW here at West Shore, um, Kid Connection, the praise team, the worship team, the pastor. We need to take every opportunity that each and every one of us has to share the good news. And God has charged each and every one of us to help with the building of his kingdom. He's charged us to spread his love, to spread his word. So stand up once again and join me in singing. As we sing the song about, as we start to build the kingdom, let it start here. We are the church. The church is not this building. The church is not this complex. We, the people of West Shore, we are the church.
right, well, for our focus prayer time this morning, we've been reading through the book of Genesis in our morning devotion, our online devotion, and a verse caught my eye this week that took me back to the 80s with a song, but did more than that, and I want us to, to pray to this effect today. Um, Genesis 35, 11, the Bible says, Then God said, I am El Shaddai, God Almighty. Be fruitful and multiply. You will become a great nation, even many nations. Kings will be among your descendants. So there was a popular song, still one of the best sold and recorded and sung songs um, in the 80s called El Shaddai. And if you look up the definition of El Shaddai, it simply means God Almighty. But here's what I want us to pray about, is that if you do a deep dive, you know, that's a, a, a buzzword, buzz phrase these days, do a deep dive into something, go into deeper. If you, if you look into the language of El Shaddai, God Almighty, it means so much more than just what the English language gives us in the words God Almighty. Mighty. It literally means God is all sufficient. Even deeper, it means God is all we need. So I want you to, as we pray this morning, I want you to think about whatever it is that is taking place in your life. Whatever challenges you have in the new year, whatever things you're facing, whatever mountains you've got to climb, whatever difficult things, whatever mundane things, whatever victories that you have, I want you to pray and understand that in the midst of all that, all that stuff's important, it's all serious, it's all part of life, but we need to remember El Shaddai. God is all we really need. He's all we really need. And if we'll remember that, it won't take the challenges of life away. I'm not standing before you as one of those guys that says that if you do this, 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 and this, God's going to take away all your problems. And you're going to go home and there'll be a check in the mail. Even on Sunday, when there's no mail, there'll be a check there. I'm not saying that, but what I'm saying is that El Shaddai, God Almighty, He is all that we literally need. So let's go to the Lord in prayer, and let's invite our new Father to the stage. Our life group uh, Thursday night. Went over to see Corey, Katie. Well, actually, we went to see Rhett. And, uh, um, and he's already stolen everybody's hearts. So uh, congratulations, and I'm Thank sorry you. that your child has stolen everybody's hearts. That's all right. About time somebody else got some attention. That's right. Uh, so thank you again for everyone for your prayers. Katie and Red are both doing great, so we appreciate it very much, all y'all support. We, we feel the love. Thank you for it. Um, well, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we come to you saying thank you so much for today. Lord, we thank you so much for being in your house and being able to worship, and we thank you so much for the fact that El Shaddai, you are enough. God is almighty, Lord. I just, I just pray as we start this new year and we all start with, as Pastor Tim said, our own set of challenges, our own set of circumstances, our own set of wins and losses from 2022 that we may be carrying over into 2023. Lord, I just pray that we all remember that, that God is almighty, that God is enough for everything. There is nothing that we will ever face that you cannot conquer, Lord. So I just pray that that we, that we cling to that and that we remember that. As Pastor Tim said, it doesn't mean that we're not going to go through trials and tribulations and that there's not going to be difficult times and challenges and things like that, but it also doesn't mean that it's always going to be that way. Lord, we know that you are a God of love. You are a God of mercy. You are a God of true, 
unwavered faithfulness, Lord. So I just pray that that we not cling to you because we think that you're somehow some genie in a bottle that's going to make all of our troubles go away, but that we cling to you because you love us so much and you want nothing but the best for us. And that if we truly live out that calling, there's, there's nothing better. There's nothing more pure. There's nothing more amazing than a life where we truly remember that God is almighty and that he will see us through all of the good times, all of the bad times and all of the in-betweens. So Lord, I just pray today that in 2023, we, we truly live out that calling. We truly live out that, that purpose and that we truly live out the, the belief that God is almighty. God is enough. Everything is in your control, Lord, and that we get closer to you because of that relationship and because of that proclamation that you've made to us, Lord. So I just pray for that today. Pray for each and every one of us and over this service. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Corey. All right. Well, as we have already alluded to, we are kicking off a brand new teaching series. Um, you were blessed last week with uh, Pastor Jay um, concluding, I guess, our little two-week kicking off the, the new year with our theme of um, infinitely more and just tagging along with that and and striving to see what God has for us in the new year. I read a book a while back, and I've, I've revisited it, and it's by Pastor John Piper, very uh, uh, famous theologian in uh, biblical circles. And uh, full disclosure, I stole the title of this series from his book, Don't Waste Your Life. And over the next six weeks, what I want us to do is just come to God with open hands and open hearts and stand before him and ask him, Lord, what can I do to make sure that when I get to the end of my life, whenever that is, that I won't have to look back and say, why did I waste it? Why didn't I do what I was supposed to do? And so this series is called Don't Waste Your Life, and we're going to um, look at, at some practical topics of how we can learn not to waste our lives. Our lives. But I want to start this morning by giving you what is uh, about the depth of your pastor's theology. You know, this, this, I think after 20 years, this year we're celebrating 20 years of, of my tenure as your pastor here at West Shore, I think you will agree that we have learned that the depth of theology is not too great, but that's okay. But I want to give you a statement of theology that you can hang on to throughout this whole series and literally throughout this entire year. And it's just three simple words. So you, you'll be able to remember these. Are you ready for it? Here it is. Life is short. Life is short. Now, when you get to a certain age, that phrase, those three words, start to mean a little bit more. 20 years ago, the phrase, life is short, did not mean as much to me as it does now. 20 years ago, I was on this side of the mountain, climbing to the top. Now I find myself, maybe not at the peak yet, maybe not on the other side, but, but pretty close. And so when you realize that, no matter what age you are, 
you have to ask yourself, what is my purpose in life? And that's another buzz phrase in our world. Even in the, the Christian world. Years ago, Rick Warren wrote the book, The Purpose Driven Life. To this day, it is at the top of the list of bestsellers, both secular and Christian. People want to know what their purpose is in life. And what I want us to grab onto and hold onto over the next six weeks, and hopefully this will be a something that will propel us into the future, is this one statement from a theologian named C.T. Studd. You put it up on the screen, and I want you to read this. <clears throat> Only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. You guys pray with me. Father, we thank you that you have given us this life with all of its ups and downs, all of its uncertainties, all of the things that we just don't know how to, to, to take and to decipher and to, to understand. Help us, Father, as your people to strive to not waste our lives, but to truly understand that only the things we do for Christ will last. I pray that you will anoint this time today, anoint your word, and as we move in the, the weeks ahead, would you anoint our time in your word that we will truly be able to say we are doing what we can for the cause of Christ. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. Amen. So we have to understand that we are talking about this from a Christian viewpoint, from a Christ follower viewpoint, from a biblical worldview. Obviously, if we ask somebody who is not a believer in Jesus Christ what their purpose is, they're going to come at us with all types of different answers. But for you and I, if we call ourselves followers of Jesus Christ, there's only one answer. And the answer is that only the things we do for Christ in this life will last. I hope you have understood. I've kind of alluded to this in the past, but here's the reality of life. One day, we're all going to lay down and draw our last breath. And all of the concerns that you have in this life will no longer concern you, and all of the problems that you have in this life will be somebody else's. And some of you are thinking, yes, and I can't wait to pass that stuff on to my kids. I want them to have my problems. But isn't that the reality? One day it's all going to end. And so there is only one thing that we take with us into the next life, and that is the things that we do for Christ. You will not see in heaven all of your vocational accomplishments here on earth. You will not see all of your financial accomplishments here on earth in the next life. The only thing you're going to see are those people who are in heaven because you were faithful to the call of Christ. That's it. So you got to ask yourself, how many people do I want to see in heaven that I'm responsible for? <laughs> Only the things that are done for Christ will last. So in part one, before we take time to... Um, observe the Lord's Supper, I want to start this sermon off by talking about a practical topic, and the title of today's sermon is Risk is Right. Risk is Right. 
And our theme verse for kind of this whole series comes from Mark chapter 8, verse 35. And this is what Jesus says. If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake and for the sake of the good news, you will save it. We live in a world that values safety above just about anything else. James chapter 4, verses 13 through 15. Here's what James says. He says, look here, you who say today or tomorrow we are going to a certain town and will stay there a year. We will do business there and make a profit. How do you know what your life will be like tomorrow? Your life is like the morning fog. It's here a little while, then it's gone. What you ought to say is, if the Lord wants us to, we will live and do this or that. James 1.19 is one of my favorite verses in all of Scripture because it just hits us with the reality of life. We don't know what our life is like. It's like a morning fog, like a morning vapor. We're here one day and poof, we're gone the next. And so only the things that we do for Christ will last. But we live in a world that is just uber safety conscious. Let me just be not politically correct for a minute. I'm sorry I'm going to say this. Um, if some of the things that we as parents do for our kids today, if, if our parents 50 years ago were told that we were going to do those things and for the sake of safety, they would have said, you guys are out of your mind. <laughs> I mean, how many of you are like me that the best place to ride in a car was on the back ledge where the back window was. Yes. Yes. Right? I mean, I had little league coaches that the only way we went to the batting cages was for all 15 or 16, 16 of us to climb in the back of the pickup truck. Uh -huh. yeah. Right? Let me clue you in on something. There weren't any seat belts in the back of that truck. Okay? So, so we live in this safety-driven world, and I understand it. It's important. We want to keep everybody safe, but you know what? Once in a while, when it comes to living for Christ, we have to be willing to take a risk. Come on, That's right. We have to be willing to say, you know what? Safety is not my concern. The hearts of people who are not going to heaven are my concern. That's right. And so I might have to be willing to put myself in a situation that may not be safe. <clears throat> well, how can you do that? Something might happen. Yes, yeah, something might happen, but you know what? Something might happen anyway. There is a wonderful song out right now by a group called We the Kingdom. And it's, it's talking about miracle power, but the bridge of the song says this. I may not know what a day may bring, but you know what? I know who brings the day. Amen. That's right. <laughs> I want you to think about that. When you woke up this morning, you had no idea. You still don't have any idea what was going to take place in today. In today's life, as you go through it, you have no idea what's going to take place. But the one thing you can know for sure is who brought the day. And that is Jesus Christ himself. He brought the day. <clears throat> the definition of risk is an action that exposes you to the possibility of loss or injury. <laughs> you tell somebody that in today's world, they're like, no, you've got to avoid risk at all costs. Yeah. Well, you know, in a financial sense, if you avoid risk at all costs, you're like the guy in Scripture who buried his money in the ground, and when the master came back, guess what he had? What he had buried in the ground. Once in a while, you've got to be willing to take risks. And whether we realize it or not, we take risks every day. You do realize that you took one of the greatest risks 
getting in your car and driving here today. That's right. Some of you are like, I took the greatest risk stepping outside of my house because it was 35 degrees today. And I just knew I was going to freeze and crack to the ground. Amen. Yes. Amen. As I walked outside in my shorts this morning, I thought, what a wonderful, beautiful day the Lord has made. That's right. We take risks all the time, don't we? We really do. If you drive on the interstate in Tampa, you take a risk every single day. You absolutely do. So then here is my question for you folks. Are you willing to take a risk for Jesus Christ? Are you willing to do something that is out of your comfort zone that you would say, that is just not me, that's not my personality, I'm not like that, and yet God has called you to do it. How do you know God has called you to do it? Because your pastor came up to you and asked you to do it. <laughs> Risk is scary. But you know what is even more scary to me? Is being asked to do something by God and saying no to him. Amen. On, Think about this for a minute. The creator of the universe. The one who, scripture says, spoke and everything came into being. Asked you to do something and you dare say no to him. I mean, did you obey your parents when you were a kid? Sometimes. I mean, somebody told me once the reason that they obeyed their parents were two reasons. Fear and common sense. Right? So are we willing to take a risk for Christ? And, and here's where I'm going with this. I hope you're tracking with me. The Word of God is filled with men and women who were willing to take a risk for God. They were willing to step out of their comfort zone to take a risk for God. I've shared this before, but we have many new people that, that may have not heard this. Um, at heart, I am the world's biggest introvert. And the first time that I was asked not to preach, but to teach a class, it took me six months to say yes. <laughs> because I was scared to death to get out of my comfort zone. You see, there is something in each one of our lives that scares us to death. And that thing that scares you to death is probably the thing that God wants to use to impact his kingdom. So what do we do? Well, we look to scripture. We talk about these people. We're going to talk about a couple in just a minute. That stepped out of their comfort zone. That were willing to risk for Christ, and then we strive to do the same thing. To take a chance. To be willing to fail. Do you realize that you don't learn as much when you succeed as you do when you fail? That's right. We learn when we fail. And if you never take a risk, if you never put yourself out there, you're not going to fail, but you're not going to learn anything. You're not going to learn anything. So, I want to give you just a few things and use some examples from Scripture that will help you to be willing to take a risk. Okay, number one, if you're taking notes, you can write this down. Very simply, trust God's plan. Trust God's plan. In the book of 2 Samuel, there's a wonderful story. We won't go into the whole thing, but it's, it's about David leading the nation of Israel against enemies coming against him. And he puts Joab 
and Joab's brother Abishai in charge of the military. And they are facing their enemies. And listen to what is said in 2 Samuel chapter 10, verse 12. The Bible says, Be courageous, let us fight bravely for our people and the cities of our God. And then this last phrase, May the Lord's will be done. Here is the key to being willing to take a risk for Jesus. May his will be done. I'm going to do this, and I'm not going to worry about the outcome. I am simply going to let God's will be done. Now, we have a problem with that, don't we? The reason we have a problem with that is called control. We like to be in control. We want to control our circumstances. We want to control our situation, and we want everything to be as smooth as glass. We don't want any bumps in the road. We don't want to have any difficulties. But what God wants us to know is that if we will be willing to take a risk and trust his plan and say, God, whatever happens, your will be done, I'm okay with it. He will see us through it. He will see us through it. But the problem is we have got to learn to relinquish control. Here's a, a visual that I want to share with you. If I'm holding on to something, if I'm holding on to my American Heritage Girls teacup, and I'm holding on to it, you know what? It can't get out of my hand. It is there. Trust me. I will hold on to this for life. But you know what else is true? If I'm doing this, nothing can get in either. Nothing that God wants to provide me or give me can get in because I am holding on to it. We have got to learn to do this. We have got to learn to open our hands before God and say, God, your will be done. That's right. Your will be done. Are there things in life that we cannot understand? Absolutely. If there's something in your life right now that you can't understand, say amen. amen. That is the reality of life. But you know what we trust? We trust the plan of God. Because his plan is perfect, our plan is garbage. That's right. Bad English, good preaching. Yeah. <laughs> so we trust God's plan. Secondly, we trust God's outcome. If you've never read the book of Esther, you need to go read the book of Esther. It is just such a wonderful story about a woman of God who, who puts everything on the line for the children of Israel. Listen to these verses, verses 15 and 16 of chapter 4. Esther is in the middle of this thing, and she says, Then Esther sent this reply to Mordecai, Go and gather together all the Jews of Susa and fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days, night or day. My maids and I will do the same. And then, though it is against the law, I will go in to see the king. If I must die, I must die. Esther was there on behalf of the children of Israel. And she was willing to go into the king. She wasn't allowed to unless the king summons her. And you know what she said? I'm going to do it anyway. She called her people to fast and to pray. Some of you are like, okay, I got a problem right there. <laughs> I'm all right with this prayer stuff, but what about this fasting stuff? I have a pastor friend who was... Uh, Felt led by God this new year to lead his church in a three-day fast. Each day they gave up something. Uh, one day they gave up solid food. The next day they gave up something else. And one day they gave up liquids other than water. And I said to him, coffee is made with water. <laughs> Do they have to give that up too? 
And Pastor Jay, he said, yes, no coffee, no coffee. She was, Esther was not allowed to go into the presence of the king, but she did. And you know what she said? If I must die, I must die. You know what she was doing? She was taking a risk for the people of God. You know what we say? Uh-uh. I'm not taking a risk. I don't want to die. I'm going to live forever. Really? Who do you think you are, Bill Mumford? <laughs> Just keep breathing. That's all you do. That's what Bill says. The key to how do you keep living, Bill? You just keep breathing. Absolutely. That's right. So we trust God's outcome. And then next, we trust God for deliverance. We trust God for deliverance. <laughs> The famous story in Daniel chapter 3 of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego where, where they are ordered to bow before the king. Verses 17 and 18 of chapter 3. Here's what they say. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God whom we serve is able to save us. He will rescue us from your power, your majesty. But even if he doesn't, we want to make it clear to you, your majesty, that we will never serve your gods or worship the gold statue that you have set up. I want you to, I want you to focus in, right in the center of that passage, on five words. But even if he doesn't, do you understand that we need to trust God for deliverance on his terms not on our own terms. That's right. You know, if I risk my life for the cause of Christ and I am killed in doing that, that is the best and the worst thing that could ever happen to me. It's the worst thing because I don't want to leave my family. I love my family and I want to, I want to be with them. But the best thing is that according to Scripture, as soon as I leave this life, I am in the presence of God Almighty. Amen. That's right. You see, we look at these things from a, a human perspective when we really need to look at them from a godly perspective. Death for the believer is not the end. It's simply a continuation. What we are doing right now is preparation for eternity. That's right. Pastor Jay, I was speaking in chapel service this week of high schoolers and the head of school who was a church planter at one time uh, was leading worship before I got up to speak and I told him that I had to I told the student body that I had to confess the sin of envy because he has the ability to lead worship and preach. And I'm guilty of the same thing with you. But you know what? Whatever God has called us to do in this life, we need to be willing to risk it for him. Amen. To risk it for him. We get to heaven, Pastor Jay is still going to have a job. <laughs> There'll be no preaching in heaven, but he's going to still get to lead a chorus of angels leading worship. That's right. Amen. I'm just going to be sitting there, singing off key, clapping off beat. <laughs> Here's the point, folks. Whatever God asked you to do, be willing to take the risk and know that he's going to deliver you according to his plan, not your plan. That's right. Finally, trust God's purpose. 
Trust God's purpose. The next example is the great example of the Apostle Paul. Acts chapter 20, verse 24. He said, but my life is worth nothing to me unless I use it for finishing the work assigned me by the Lord Jesus. The work of telling others the good news about the wonderful grace of God. No matter what your calling is in life, no matter what God asks you to do, your purpose is the same as everybody else. To glorify God by leading others to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. That's what this life is all about. Two things. Bringing glory to God by leading people to Jesus. And yet I know Christians who won't even pray in a restaurant before their meal because they're afraid somebody will look at them weird. Come on, bro. Come on. If that's you, let me tell you something. They're already looking at you weird. <laughs> you don't have to pray to get them to do that. I mean, have you looked around you at people? Yeah, we're all weird. We're all weird. But as followers of Jesus Christ, and let's just wrap it up with this. As followers of Jesus Christ, we have a purpose. And sometimes that purpose means taking a risk. Talking to somebody that you're afraid to talk to. Inviting somebody to church that you're afraid to talk to. Going and sitting next to a visitor in church. <gasps> you mean I have to leave my seat? <laughs> I was uh, in a conference on Friday, a really beneficial time that I'd spent with uh, some other pastors and uh, talking about some different things. And the leader of this conference was talking about a church that he served. And he was talking about this one lady that she was the most dependable church member you could ever ask for. But he said, you know what? Don't ever let somebody be sitting in her seat. <laughs> Side note, you don't have your own seat here, okay? <laughs> Let's be willing to take a risk for the cause of Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. God wants to do infinitely more than we could ever ask or think. But he wants us to have some skin in the game. Let's all pray together. Father, we thank you for bringing us into this new year with all its uncertainty. Help us, Father, to turn it all over to you. To realize that we have a purpose. And that purpose is the cause of Christ. Thank you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Pastor Jay. The Bible says that on the night that Jesus was betrayed, after he had eaten the Passover meal with his disciples, said, guys, we got a little bit more to do here. And he picked up some bread, and he broke it, and he handed it to them. Guys.
broke it. Then he explained to the disciples something that would change their whole thinking because they had just finished the Passover meal which celebrated the Passover lamb that helped the children of Israel. And now Jesus is saying, that Passover lamb is no longer needed anymore because I am the lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. He said, each time you do this, remember my death until I come. He said, take and eat. This is my body. Father, we thank you for Jesus' sacrifice for us. We thank you that he did it just for us. In his name we pray. After they ate the bread, he took the cup and he blessed it. And he said, this is my blood that is shed for you. It's a new covenant. I was thinking, as Pastor Tim mentioned earlier, that when we are up in heaven, how many people were we able to share with that were there? And I kind of imagine... Jesus asking God the Father the same thing in the garden when he was praying. How many people do I have to do this for? How many people do I have to give up my life for? Of course, we know the answer is everybody. But what's more important is Jesus would have done the same thing if it was only one. We may get up to heaven and there may only be one person that we shared with that we see there. But that makes it all worth it. Pastor Tim reiterated it today. God doesn't ask for our ability. He asks for our availability.
prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, help us to realize the sacrifice that you made for us and that the blood that was shed by Jesus, that was shed once and for all, was shed once for us. Amen. Father, that it was shed once for me. Lord, let us remember the sacrifice. And let us be willing to sacrifice, to not be afraid. And as we've learned, to not waste the opportunities that you present us. As Jesus did not waste his. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. He said, take and drink. says that as they left the upper room, they left singing a song. That's what we're going to do to dismiss. Um, stand with us. There'll be a deacon at each door to collect our offering of benevolence. And uh, let's just stand together as we sing this song as a prayer.
as we're dismissed today, Corey's going to come and pray. I would ask you to keep in your prayers uh, several of our church families, extended family members who have lost loved ones. Um, the <coughs> memorial service for Jana Livingston's father will be this afternoon at Blunt and Curry on MacDill. Um, the Kelleher family, Sean's mom, passed away this week. And uh, we just learned that this morning that uh, Bill and Becky's son, his mother-in-law, passed away in, uh, in the Virginia area. So uh, if you just remember these, our church family and the extended families as um, they deal with these loss, losses. Um, until next time, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you. May he be gracious to you and give you peace. Corey. Let's pray. Lord, we come to you saying thank you again for letting us be here today, letting us hear this word, hear this message. And Lord, I just pray that each of us that, that was here today and watches this online truly applies this to our lives, Lord, that we don't just sit here and sing some songs and listen to some words, but that we truly let this message impact our lives, Lord, and that we just follow in your footsteps as we talk today about you know making a sacrifice or going out on a limb or trusting in you lord and you being almighty lord no no more a better example has there ever been than when you went out on a limb when you trusted in your father and you died on the cross for our sins so lord i just pray today that we that we live out our calling for you lord that we all use the gifts that you blessed us with and that we use it to positively impact not only ourselves but impact your kingdom and generations to come so I just thank you again for allowing us to be here. Pray that you keep us happy, healthy, safe, and protected, and bring us back again next week. In Jesus' name, amen.